what are some of the biggest mistakes I made in my early UX career and what would I do now if I could go back to avoid them? Um, um, um. I was so focused on UX design and so focused on the dogma of usability and I was like basically like a warrior for usability, for UX design. I was a bit of a pain in the ass to my clients because they would ask me for something and I would sort of fight with them a little bit if it wasn't really connecting or aligning with the way that I wanted to do UX because I wanted to do UX design the proper way, you know, perfect usability, you know, it just, just I really wanted to stick to the rule book. And what I didn't think about was the fact that these clients don't care about UX and that's not their job to care about UX. They're coming to me because they want to sell something online or make something more engaging. They're not coming to me to make just a nice usability. They have a business goal behind why they're coming to me. And now when I talk to clients, I actually lead with the business goals. I ask them about their business goals. I've learned the language that they speak. And a lot of the ways that I've learned the language that they speak is obviously experience and being in the rooms with them. But I've also read a couple of books that have helped. So for example, The Lean Startup. The Lean Startup is a great book that will teach you sort of like the ways to understand how products are made from the product manager and CEO perspective. Hacking Growth is a great book that you can read if you're looking to get that perspective as well. And so just for me as a designer to understand the business goals a little bit more made my career more successful. And I kept making the mistake of being too dogmatic about the design. As you're watching this video, if you think it's really valuable, we have videos like this every Tuesday. We'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. Ding. So one mistake that I wish I'd avoided at the beginning of my UX career is not picking something and sticking with it long enough. I didn't have the patience and the solution for that would be really to just sit down. If I were starting again today, I would be a lot more strategic about what I choose to learn because when you're just starting out, there's so much exciting stuff out there and you might just hear a video of someone talking about something and you get so excited about it and you get fear of missing out and like, this is the thing I need to learn and you stop everything you were doing and you go and learn that. And if you do that a lot, then you would be just all over the place and you wouldn't have anything that you specialize in. And so the way I would counter that is that it's still really good to learn a lot and just to explore in the beginning, but I would be more strategic about it. I would sit down and write down why I want to learn something, why I think it would benefit me. And then I would set a timeline for myself and say like, all right, I'm going to go really deep on this for two months and I'm not going to focus on anything else during that period. And then at the end of the two months, I say like, do I want to continue down this road? Do I want to develop this further? Or is there something that I think would be even more beneficial now? Yeah. So one mistake that actually stands out to me that I did in a client project was basically ignoring the instruction because I was assuming that as a designer, I know what's going to work. And that was basically a huge mistake because in the end, like I should have worked on the home screen, which is pretty much one of the most important screens of every app. But the instructions actually were making different versions of the home screen just to show the client different options that we could pursue. And because I didn't see really the bigger picture of why I should make different options, I just followed this narrow path that my brain pretty much laid out to me and just made one version of the home screen. One thing that you viewers of this YouTube channel, of AJ and Smart's channel, I see you making this mistake all the time in the comments. So, you know, sometimes I'll talk about something like a new Apple product or, or some UI, and then you write in the comments, oh, Apple sucks, oh, that design sucks, oh, blah, 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 blah. That shows me that you're immature in the way that I was when you're just thinking about the design. When you see Apple releasing, I don't know, they just, at WWDC, they just showed off the new widgets, Yes, that's not super exciting. But if you think about the integration of all of their services, if you think about the business models behind it, then it's a bit more interesting. So I think the idea that being a UX designer is not just about the visuals and the user experience, but also about the bigger picture of the product and sort of the business behind the product. I wish I'd known that a bit earlier, but it takes time to learn. So definitely one mistake that I made a lot early in my career is not communicating with my manager or my boss early enough about when I needed help or when I needed more time. So a lot of times I would be working on something 
and I would want it to be really good. And so I would go over the deadline and not communicate that until it was too late. And that would cause problems. And if I had just communicated that I needed more time for something, things would have been okay. And I would still have had the time to work on something to the level that I wanted to get it out at, but I didn't. And I learned that lesson the hard way. And so communicating early on and asking for help, even when you think there's a chance you might not meet a deadline, just communicate that very early, see if you can ask for more time or if you can reduce the scope of the thing that you're working on. Because if you don't, you're gonna get into trouble. And I learned that the hard way. I try to don't beat myself up when I mis make mistakes. But generally the way I deal with mistakes is if I made a mistake, which I'm okay with, I really try and figure out what the actual underlying problem is and the reason why the mistake happened. And then after I try to figure that out, I just try and find ways to prevent that. Just trying to take a step back, reflect, and then come back with a solution and a pretty much like a checklist so you don't make the mistake again. So this is gonna sound simple, but it's actually really, really hard to do. So when something goes wrong and you make a mistake, just own it and take full responsibility for it and resist the urge to come up with excuses or point a finger at like the situation or the client or a teammate because all of that doesn't really matter. Focus on what you could have done differently even if you like deep down inside you think it was someone else's fault. Just own the mistake and say, I'm really sorry about this. Next time like I'll know how to do X better because now I know not to do you know why, for example. But just own the mistake and this is gonna be really, really hard. So the real question is, what are you gonna do differently next time to handle that situation? Thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been really valuable to you. I wanna know in the comments below which piece of advice you found most valuable or most relevant for your UX career. And if you think the advice in this video is really valuable, we'd really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. Nearly three quarters of our viewers aren't subscribed to the channel yet and it makes a huge difference to us. We also have a weekly newsletter which you can subscribe to below in the description if you want exclusive access to some amazing UX, UI, product design and career advice resources. Check that out too. See you next week.